Beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God who is said to Moses, I have seen, I have heard, I know, and I have come. Moses' people are in bondage in Egypt. Moses has fled a crime and is hiding in the wilderness. He's married now and tending his father-in-law's sheep. Does Moses ever think of his people's suffering? But God comes in this burning but not consumed bush and says, I have seen the abuse of my people in Egypt. I have heard my people's cries. I know their pain and suffering and I have come down to rescue my people. God sees, God hears, God knows, and God has come to bring deliverance, rescue, and healing. And back then, God's people were brought out of slavery into freedom. But consider this, in our world today, where all the problems and struggles and sufferings and abuses and pains are so evident, the triune God sees all this suffering and oppression too. The triune God hears the cries of God's children who are in pain, knows they suffer from injustice. And today God says, I have come to deliver my children. But in these readings, God comes by calling Moses and the Roman Christians today. God comes in the burning bush for one reason, to call Moses to be God's hands, God's voice, God's instrument to deliver the people. Paul's Roman Christians are likewise called. Everything Paul says today is God's response to what God has seen, heard, and known with the Roman Christians as God's means of deliverance by holding fast to what is good while resisting evil, by loving each other as siblings even with their great differences, by rejoicing in hope, patiently suffering, persevering in prayer, by contributing to the needs of those siblings and offering hospitality to those who are strange to them, by blessing persecutors and enemies, setting aside vengeance, and above all, being people of peace, even if others aren't. God sees, hears, and knows, and God calls regular people to be God's coming, which is why Jesus calls you and me to a cross-shaped life today. Paul's words today are exactly what taking up your cross might look like in your life. It means it will be challenging, frustrating, overwhelming. You might be tempted to give it all up. You will need to stand in the face of evil with only your trust in God at your side. You will be asked to be vulnerable in many ways. It sounds a lot like what happened to Moses when he followed the call, doesn't it? It sounds a lot like what happened to those first disciples who also became witnesses by their very lives offered for this world. This is both good news and very frightening news. God sees and hears and knows the pain of this world. And God comes to deliver, to rescue, to heal. But God won't do it without you, without me, to love, to embrace, to make peace, to stand against evil, even if it means saying to the Pharaoh of this land, God says, let my people go. It actually comes down to what kind of rock you'll be. Simon got a new nickname last week, Peter, meaning rock. 
His trust and love became part of the bedrock of the foundation of this new community of faith Jesus is building as do yours and mine, as we heard last week. But this week, Simon the Rock is compared not to a bedrock foundation, but to a rock that sticks up in the road and makes people trip. You are a stumbling block to me, Jesus says, a hindrance to my coming to deliver, to rescue, to heal. And both of these are possible for you and me. Will you let the Spirit transform you into Christ so that your fear, love, and trust of God will become part of the foundation of God's church so that you, like Moses and like those Roman Christians, become part of God's coming to deliver, to rescue, to heal? Or will you be a stumbling block to God's rescue Plant yourself in your place. Refuse to risk, to love, to make peace for whatever reason you have. Maybe it's fear of being hurt that plants you and me in our road. Maybe it's our stubbornness that we don't want to change. We don't want to be challenged. To live a life as Paul describes will require from each one of us drastic changes in how we relate to others, especially to those who are strangers to us and to those who are enemies. But our refusal to live lives of Christly, vulnerable love trips up God's plan of salvation, becomes not an instrument for God's rescue, but a hindrance to it. So, will you take up your cross and follow Christ. Everything is at stake, literally. <laughs> Everything. The world is in flames and full of fear. And God sees this, hears the cries, knows the pain, and desperately wants to come and bring deliverance, rescue, and healing. Will you take the time to turn to the burning bush and hear God's call to you? Will you listen to your brother Paul urge you to find a completely new map to what it is to live your life as Christ, even if, as God's Son tells you today, it will be costly, sacrificial, vulnerable? Because if, with the strength and courage of the Spirit, you and I answer and follow, then Jesus' words today will be fulfilled. There are people here today who will not die before they see Christ's reign. Because such following on this kind of a path creates a world where no one weeps alone, where more and more work together for peace, even if others fight, where mutual love and respect abound, where strangers receive hospitality and siblings in need are cared for as well where revenge is non-existent and where even enemies are loved. Such a world is Christ's reign and it could be now. God sees, God hears, God knows and this is astonishingly good news. And now God says, I need you because I have come to deliver my children. I have come to bring rescue to my world. And I will be with you as I was with Moses and with those first disciples. And like them, you can and will be my hands, my voice, my instruments for justice and mercy and healing in my world. So all will know that I see and I hear, and I know, and I have come. In the name of Jesus, amen.